what you said at one point in time you were set to go to college. What yeah. what changed what changed your direction? Um, I screwed up myself. You know what I mean? I, I mean I could blame my circumstance. My mom went to prison. I moved to my father's house. Just gave up faith. Didn't know how I was gonna pay. Um, started hustling, you know, selling rocks. Already was from where I was from. You know, what I mean it wasn't nothing, but started looking at the economics of selling drugs. Didn't really have the the morality clause of it all. You know, I, I thought people was making a choice to um purchase. I didn't think, you know, as a kid, you don't know that people are chemically addicted, you know what I'm saying, to this substance. You don't know. And I was making so much money hustling. I wanted to go to, to school and be a pharmacist to make $65,000 a year. I was making that at 18. Mm. You feel me? So I was thinking about how I was going to pay for college. You know what I mean? And started hustling like, oh, I do this to pay for college. And realized what I was going to get a job to pay for, I'd probably be making double that the next year. So, you know, it, sometimes you're too smart for your own good. Okay, I, I get that, Doc. I get that. Just a, uh, a bad mistake, you know what I mean? Did you pay for it? Yeah, yeah. I paid for it with a lot of morality. You know, I, I never went to prison, so thank God I don't, you know, I don't have a parole number or, or, you know, the time I was convicted, I was able to get a deferred entry of judgment, which is like a drug diversion for a drug dealer. So I, I don't have a tail, you know, I'm able to, I don't have a felony that's on my record. So, but I paid for it morally because now, a lot of times, you know, I feel like shit about a lot of stuff. But it also gave me insight, you know what I mean? And that's what I try to share with the world through music. I like that, Doc. I can respect that. I, can respect. I was expecting a different interview, man. <laughs> what kind of interview was you expecting, well, big girl? Well, you know, you know um, I ain't going to say I was expecting a different I'm going to say... I'm glad. The, I'm glad the interview we getting, we having right now, is what we what, what we get. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, you know when when, when I saw Mason's comment, cause you, I think you sent me the link, and he said it was uh, the weakest thing a man could do was join the gang. I'm like, damn, that's some hard shit right there. Okay, uh, I didn't know yeah. how you going to, I know how you're gonna respond to that, but I'm seeing, after I listen to your response, I'm impressed, Doc. I'm impressed with your response. You know, sometimes you get brothers come at you a whole different way, man. Hey, dude, you know. That's what we do and how we do it and blah blah blah. I understand you make it you make it make sense. Okay. Yeah. That, that, well, I that mean, wasn't expecting that. The logics of it all is is you know, being able to be sober. You know what I mean? The average person maybe not speaking of it that was sober, like being conscious through the whole experience and, and really asking questions to your friends is you can see what it is. They may not be able to see because they so high and drunk at that point of just dealing with the trauma that it causes. They can't explain it. Me, I was sober. I ain't never smoked or drank a day in my life. So I was sober through every experience. And I always talked to my homies. You know, I've been knowing them since we were kids. So I was able to pay attention. I even asked my older homies questions that made them uncomfortable. But, you know, I was able to kind of get an understanding and, and make wiser decisions even within that culture. You know what I mean? Like, everybody couldn't just tell me to do something. Like, it had to make sense to me because... I had to be willing to go to prison for life based on the decision. So, and I realized everybody else wanted that choice. They just didn't know how to make it. You know what I mean? Their circumstances made them have to be more of a soldier without, you know, question for people. That was never me. I was always able to question it. And you fight enough niggas and you're willing to, you know, bust your gun for your respect. People feel like they need to answer them and give you that much, you know, credence and I, I, I totally respect that. Doc. People willing to give you that credence and respect. You know what I mean? They're willing to answer your questions. I got that. Now, I, I got to go back a little, little, little bit, man. Uh, one of the questions my man pulled up from me, when you made that song, uh, Tupac Must Die, I know you caught flack on that. How, what was your... I, I know what you... Was, I, I, I watched the video this morning. Sure. Yeah, you I, watched saw, it I, I, see what, I see what you was getting at. I can appreciate your artistic value of that, but I know you caught flack on that. Yeah, yeah, a ton. Um, it was all in good spirit of trying to add a brick to West Coast hip hop, you know, from its origin of, of storytelling. And, and, you know, hip hop is so much about culture and how we do things where we're from or how, how this group of people does things. 
And one of the biggest things in culture is morality. You know what I'm saying? Like what's right and what's wrong? Because some places is different. You know what I mean? What's right and what's wrong versus where we from is just different. So that was the perfect idea to talk about that. And in a time where it's a thousand rappers joining gangs after becoming rappers, and they're joining gangs in foreign lands, you feel me? Like somebody should explain to them morally that there's some differences that you should probably understand. Um, I think the title, I mean, my James from, from, from my, I mean, OG James, I know my, I know James. He, he told me it was the title. Yeah. So James told me it was the title he felt. Um, but when I made the title, I was just thinking of like, you know, Romeo must die. I didn't, it was a movie. Like I had right, made right. a movie. So I named it like a film. Okay. Um, I, I, I listened to the song. I mean, Dr. Dre cussed me out about it. You know, I've been knowing Dre since before I even took rap serious. He cussed me out about it for an hour. No and shit. Somehow he thought, yeah, somehow he thought the song was fuck Tupac. And I'm like, yo, I never said that even from the perspective of the people that, you know, he assaulted. It was never that attitude. It was always like, you know, explaining the mind of a guy. I've been a gangbanger for a long time. You know what I'm saying? I know how it goes. I know the morale. I know all the morality. I know how we think. I know what it's like to be jumped. I know what it's like to get that justice on people for jumping. I know how we feel after it, how we justify it, and it's right. So to share that with the world was the point. You know what I mean? That gangbanging is its own culture. You know what I'm saying? And it has its own level of morals. You know what I mean? What's right and what's wrong. And, it, and no man is bigger than the program on the West Coast. You know, some of the greatest names in the history of West Coast street life, you know, whether it's Adele Dog, whether it's you know, a uh, 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 PD, you know, from Bonnie and it's, it's, it's a thousand great names that have been, you know, taken from off the earth by somebody that wasn't as celebrated as they were because no man is bigger than a program here. And I think that's what I was trying to share with the world. Hey, Chris Brown, hey, Soldier Boy, if this is what y'all gonna do, y'all need to understand no man is bigger than a program. Now, you said something, man, that baffles the shit out of me, and that is why would somebody who got the money already go back and retroactively join the gang? What, what can you help me understand that? I, so, honestly, I think it's more or less it's a respect that they feel like they aren't, they aren't getting as men. You know, gang banging it's a level of camaraderie. Again, I don't. I don't ever want to talk about gang banging in the positive way. That's not what I'm trying to achieve. Okay. What I'm trying to do is explain the logic. So it's a camaraderie, right? That's unmatched. It's somebody willing to kill and die for you in theory. Hmm. Who, who doesn't want men that will kill and die for them, right? Um, right. Also the respect, you know, you, you, it's a level of, you could walk with your chest out. You know what I mean? If you've been through the, the rigors of, of, of what this culture will put you through, you proud that you survived it and you proud to be a part of it. You know what I mean? The, the, the whole atmosphere of it. So money, as much as people feel like money fixes that, it doesn't. I mean, you just be a rich bitch ass nigga. Mm. You feel me? And, and don't <laughs> money, you know, it's just a couple people who play the role well of being a rich bitch ass nigga, but that's not an easy task. You know, everybody still want to be something real you know something respected something admired and i think so when you get a soldier boy who feels like he isn't giving his propers like his respect you know he's looking at somebody who's less successful that everybody is walking around and they shaking his hand and they showing him love you know even with all that money you know he looks like damn i would rather be that mm. i know that sounds crazy but you know money don't do nothing but buy you objects when you get respect, you know, that, 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 that love, that, that, that admiration, you know, which human being on earth, you know, you only want that from your wife and your kids. So right. you want that from everybody. So I think that's where they get caught up at. I think even with Tupac per se, like that camaraderie, you know, he, he never really probably felt that kind of love from other human beings. You know what I mean? And then to meet a bunch of guys that you could command and they will attack for you. They will, dive in front of a bullet, that, that has to feel like, you know, all, all like, 
that has to put you in a different space, like as a human being, where you just truly like are enamored and, and then you're just willing to be a part of it because that's how, you know, good it makes you feel. 